in. Welcome to my piano teaching crib. The piano room is right as soon as you get in the door, which is very convenient. Come on in. So here is my little, the first thing that greets my students is my sock basket. I ask my students to put on socks because their feet are often dirtier under their flip-flops than their shoes are. So there's their socks to choose from. This came from my students in Minnesota when I moved here. It's a song that uh, one of the one of my students' dad was a orchestra teacher. So he wrote out the song and all the notes are fingerprints of my students that I had at the time. So that was really a cool gift that I got before I moved. I have this bench here that kids can sit on. It's really also really great storage. I love that headset because my students do use the iPad when they're here. Halloween books, piles and piles of music everywhere. I hope you can relate. Hi, this is Denise Frost. I'm giving you a virtual tour of my piano studio at 249 West Center in Monticello, Utah. This is where the kids can see it when they wait with parents and stuff. Um, I have, oh, a lot of various and different things on the walls from time to time. This is encouraging students to get their flashcards, music flashcards done in, and so that they can do it super quick. Their goal is to get into flashiest. The All Keys Club means that they have um, learned around the circle of fifths, not just the scales and cadences, but a piece. We usually pick an easy piece at the, at the beginning that has mostly cadence chords in the bottom and they learn to play that piece in every key. And then this is a hymn uh, chart. The kids like to learn hymns, whether they're learning out of the regular hymn book, the simplified, or the hymns made easy. We just keep a colorful little chart. And all it is is to see how many hymns they've learned. They don't get a prize for this. There are things we do get prizes for this, but this is just to see progress. And you can see some of them are in a little bit of a competition there. I use print music, which is a very inexpensive version of Finale, and the kids can sit here at the piano, and we can uh, write out their compositions, and together we can get it into the computer and get it in published form, which they think is great. These are the books, some of the books that we've made over the years. We go to our local school media center and very inexpensively can get their compositions bound into a book. Um, the headphones, of course, help when they want to just come in here and play while they're waiting for their turn. Sign on Joy Morin's colorinmypiano.blogspot.com. My students enjoy seeing how many days until the next performance. We just had our fall recital, so getting excited about Christmas. And you can see I have lots of Christmas music we're going through right now. Just finding that out, so that's fun. Okay, um, over here I have a bulletin board on the wall with just some a quote of the month. So I'm hopefully my students, when they see that, they remember it, and hopefully that'll help them. Um, it's kind of fun record of achievements so I keep it here so as they complete books um, and perform pieces and and do performances I can record it as I'm thinking about it I really really love this highlighter tape I use it a lot it comes off really easily so you're not marking up the music my students do what I call extended lessons where I overlap my students by 15 minutes so as I'm finishing up with a student at the piano, the next student comes in and has 15 minutes of lab time. Um, so they're able to sit to sit here and do sight reading here, or I have my iPad hooked up by, with MIDI. Um, and I, I like to use Piano Maestro. It's an awesome app. It's free for teachers and their students. And it's really great. If you haven't tried it, you really should check it out. So I use the digital piano a lot for those uh, extended lesson times.
Let's go in. So I have my books and teaching supplies, CD player here on these shelves. I love being able to play music for students. And we have my Baldwin Upright Grand that I've had for 23 years. Love this piano. Um, the newest addition to this studio is the Schimmel Grand, which we are so fortunate and grateful to have. Uh, over here, the windows, the, where the parents can sit, um, and then my, my office area here. So it's fairly quiet, even though I do have children running around, um, it's working out really well. I like that I can have in this studio some visual inspiration. I like having uh, pictures. Here's, of course, uh, Chopin, how moody he is. It helps people to see that when they're playing his music. I love this portrait of Schubert and how he's surrounded by singers. I just try to remind students how much composers are influenced by the human voice. Uh, my favorite painting, which is carved onto soft wood blocks and pressed onto paper, is by my brother-in-law, Alex Preston. So this large piece is actually a woman sort of playing the piano, and her music is leaving the keys and floating up into the sky in these beautiful blooms. And he was listening to Bach's Goldberg variations when he created this and then he gave it to me. These pianos are placed at an angle so you can see each other when you're playing. Uh, the students can see me demonstrating techniques and um, I can see them and they're tuned to each other so they sound beautiful when they're together and that's my favorite aspect of my studio. Thank you. So a couple of things I do to keep organized in the student's stu studio. One thing I like to use are Hannon stickers. I place these stickers at the top of each Hannon so it can remind the students to continue to work on getting it up to tempo. Um, and then I also have some progress charts that I keep track of what they're doing. Um, I have a rhythm book that I've put together and um, it has all different levels of rhythm. I got most of them, printed most of them off of this pianomz.com, if you're interested in that. It has all levels. And um, so what I do is I pick the level that I want the student to do. There's even some that I have that are double hand, that they can do two different beats um, at the same time. And uh, they can either do that, they can, so I will tell them how many times I want them to do each line and assign maybe a page to them. They can do it with the rhythm sticks or I have this little, um, this great, this little drum that they can use and they have a lot of fun with that one. Uh, another great idea are the cuppers. Um, this is a sample page from the cuppers. Uh, you can buy their books and um, they're just really a fun activity. Um, as you see, they give directions for whether you hit the cup on the table or upside down or, or um, tap it with your hand or whether you pass it. And um, it's a great activity um, to do with two or more students or um, even just by themselves. One of the things I like about my piano studio is my piano scan that I have hooked to my computer and then I'm able to make recordings of my students. At the end of the year they take their recordings and we make a CD for them and they give those to their parents for Christmas. Okay. So now all I have to do is save that. At which time it gives us a little playback of the recording.
Anyway, this is a lot of fun in my studio, so hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Is about 250 years old. It's been dated. I sit in that every day just so that um, this little, I just have this little rack of essentials with the file and, and pretty simple. Um, those are for advanced kids and young kids, all different. And then the other kids, I'm going to take you down stairs. The kids that come into this studio come through the back door right here. And, and then come into this studio. And I'm just going to sweep around the room. Um, this is our library. So at the top you'll see advanced and it goes down to intermediate, elementary, and below are all our duet and ensemble stuff. And my favorite, favorite board from Gina Barton. Uh, Love it. We use that constantly. And then, of course, our digitals. And uh, this little nook right here. This is just a kitchen uh, desk. This is a closet. This is just a little 12 by 12 little bedroom that I've changed into a studio. And so I keep all of our um, important stuff up here and, and figured this little kitchen desk will fit right in the closet um, if you have a small space it works and then these little baskets are full of all of our um, our games and and uh, uh, fun stuff you can see in there. Incentive of chart and calendar and anything that they that they need and then they're on the way out and that's it got to take the shoes off before they come in My piano is located on this wall. I'm a strong believer in using technology with my students. My piano is on the wall, this wall and I have a video camera that can be easily set up for recording students. I then send the recordings to them so they can see the progress. I also have an Android tablet that I use for games and storing music for me to play. On the other side of the studio I have a keyboard microphone and laptop. Students can use the keyboard for practicing or composing. The laptop is used for music games as well as music notation software and business programs. I also teach violin lessons so I use the music stand for violin lessons. One of the nicest things about my studio is the large closet. I was blessed with all of my husband's grandmother's books from her teaching and performing days. I have organized all of it, as well as my own music, into magazine boxes. They are organized by instrument, method, and genre of music. You will notice a desk and many pianos. The many pianos are used for purposes of ensemble playing for me to play along with the students and also for them to use the earphones to warm up or to practice if they are waiting for their lesson. The students are motivated by my fame board. This board recognizes the students that are in fame, that have made it to level six and the year they've done it, as well as those that have made it all the way to level 10 the wall you will see a puzzle that the students themselves have put together called the music room which is of all the possible instruments that over the centuries the oldest as well as the newest Welcome to the Hunt Piano Studio. When my students arrive, they are reminded to take their shoes off and come to the house. 
I come back to the piano room. This is not the piano room. This is the babysitting grandkids room. And they come back, they come back, and they come back into the piano room. This is where I teach. If I had to go answer the door every time a student came, I wouldn't be teaching very much. Um, when my students come in, they sit down at the acoustic piano. I teach to the right of them. I love having the digital piano next to them where I can play alongside. One of the things I like is my quote wall. I have lots of different things up here. And some of them are reminders to me, some are reminders to my students. Um, and when I have my master classes, I give them a test and say, write down two things you remember from the wall. Okay, so over here, I have my piano room closet. I like having access to all my music, but I can close the door and it's hidden away. Will you go bring me my phone, please, Desmond? Yeah. Um, I have a up on the top, those are all duets and hidden back behind are Christmas things, which I'll pull out when we get there. I keep my candy stashes here. I keep my reward box here. I keep all kinds of things in this closet. Rosemary, this is for you. See, I include audiating in my piano lessons now, thanks to your great presentation last year. So this is the Hunt Piano Studio. I hope it makes you appreciate what you have or inspires you to implement a few extra things. Screaming grandkids do not come with the piano room, I promise. Now to show you my after pictures of my piano studio. I cleaned up my wall. My daughters thought it'd be a great idea to declutter. I really like the look. I feel a lot cleaner in here. Um, one of the things I did, I had two very large bookshelves in here. I took them out and I got this oblong ottoman that I love. It's got great storage space in it. Look at this. This is the best place ever. And my grandkids haven't discovered it yet. Anyway, it makes a good sitting place. I, bought, uh, I got a piece of masonite, covered it with this contact paper that is whiteboard paper. And it's great because you can write, write on it. And look at this, I can erase it. And then if I had my marker, which I don't, it's in the other room. I can write back on there. And I have most of my piano students' pictures up here. I love this board. One of the biggest improvements I made was because of Rebecca Udy's video. I saw her white boxes and I loved her organization. And so I called her, said, where'd you get your boxes? And she said, Ikea, but St. George doesn't have an Ikea. So I went to Amazon, my answer to everything. I got these boxes for under a dollar a piece. I love the organization. I feel... <laughs> It's so accessible now, so much more than it was. I don't have Christmas music tucked away. I have it accessible over here. I have my duet, my recital music accessible. I have my duet recital music accessible. Everything is accessible. I love it. So thank you, Rebecca, for your insight and recommendations and for everybody's help. I hope everybody feels inspired to do better with their piano studios and make it a place where you feel comfortable and love teaching. See ya.